This lecture is going to cover what we call the distribution of sample means. And how we'll think about the distribution of sample means is going back to what we learned previously. Right, so previously what we were trying to do was find probabilities or percentages associated with the normal distribution. And more specifically what we were trying to do was find a, a probability or percentage associated with a single observation. For instance, when we were doing this IQ example, how likely was it that a person at random had an IQ above 120? Now what we're going to be interested in is not a single observation, but multiple observations. For instance, imagine you and four friends, for shits and giggles, decided to all take the IQ test, and you were worried about how you did collectively. So you all took the IQ test, you all got a score, and what we want to figure out is how likely is it that the average of you and your four friends, so five people, how likely is it that your average score was above, for instance, 120? Well, that's going to require us to think about a different type of distribution known as the distribution of sample means. Let's see a quick simulation to represent this. Here we have a website that's going to represent this concept. Now, I have posted this website on your week three resources as well as under this video. Now, it's not required that you do what I do, but if you want to kind of follow along or mess with some stuff yourself, you're more than welcome to. So I'm going to hit begin at the top left here, and this is going to represent sampling distributions. So I zoomed in a little bit just so it's a little bit more clear. And what we have to start is a normal distribution. So you can think of this distribution as normal. And if I unzoom, or maybe I'll try to get zoom a little bit, you'll see that this distribution is normal. Now, it looks to be somewhat discrete because it's not a smooth line, right? These aren't smooth lines, so this may be a discrete distribution, but we're going to be using an approximate normal distribution to represent this. And so what we have here, by default, it gives us the mean of 16 and standard deviation of 5. Right, so just keep that in mind as we go throughout this right now. The standard deviation of this distribution is 16 and the mean of 5. It's kind of arbitrary numbers. Right, we talked about how we can always standardize things in terms of how many standard deviations away from the mean are you. So we can think of this as any mean and any standard deviation. And what we are interested in was you and your four friends, imagine you all took the IQ test, and all we're going to do is plot that mean. So that blue dot represents the mean of these five observations. Imagine we do it again. We take the mean of five observations and plot it. So you can see at this little graph right here, it's representing we're plotting the mean. This should be honestly lowercase n, where our sample size is five. And we can repeat this process over and over again. Imagine five different people taking the IQ test, plotting their mean score five different people. And again, I can just keep clicking this animate button over and over again. This is going to simulate that I'm doing this process five times, taking the mean of five people, plotting it, and doing that five times. I can simulate this concept 10,000 times. I can simulate this concept 100,000 times. So we simulated this concept, taking the mean of five people and plotting it 1.56 million times. Some things to notice. Number one is the mean of this distribution, which we call the distribution of sample means because that's what's what this is. Each point here represents a sample mean. The mean of this distribution is 16. Our original mean was 16. So they have the same exact center. The standard deviation was 5 originally, and now it shrunk. The spread shrinks the more and more observations you take in your sample when calculating the mean. Watch what happens when we do the same thing, but now for 25 observations. Imagine we took 25 observations 
and plotted the mean for those 25 observations. Now a bunch of people are taking this IQ test. All right, so that represents the mean of now 25 observations. I can simulate this process over and over again, plotting the mean of 25 observations, plotting the mean of 25 observations, plotting the mean of 25 observations. I just simulated this 1.1 million times. And we'll notice our spread has shrunk from before. It started at five. When we did five people it was 2.24, now it's all the way down to one. We'll notice the center is still exactly the same. The shape still seems to be bell-shaped. So the only real difference between our original distribution and this new distribution is our spread. Our spread shrinks. And one way to think about this is the more observations you have in your data set, the less variability you're going to have. More observations equals less variability. And the less variability we have, the smaller spread we're going to have for our distributions. So it's important to realize that when we're interested about multiple observations and the mean of those observations, we're going to have to analyze a different distribution. We will not be using the original distribution anymore. We're going to be using this new distribution the distribution of sample means. And what we'll find is if our original distribution is normal, then this new distribution will also be normal. The centers will be exactly the same. The only difference is the spread. So now let's talk a little bit about that spread. We're going to go a little bit more in depth into the standard deviation of our new distribution, the distribution of sample means, that blue distribution that we saw. What we'll notice is again is the means vary less than individual observations. The more observations you have, the smaller your spread becomes. We denote the spread of our new distribution as sigma x bar. Right, sigma x bar. And that x bar represents the standard deviation of X bar, the sample mean. We call this the standard error. Anytime you're dealing with a standard deviation of a sampling distribution, not an original distribution, a sampling distribution, we denote that concept as the standard error. And what we'll find is this is used for a couple reasons, but one, it's to make things a little bit less confusing in the sense that our standard error now, or our standard deviation, is comprised of the original standard deviation. If you wanted to calculate your new standard deviation, it's actually a function of your original standard deviation. And what it depends on is the square root of n the number of observations in your sample. The more observations you have, the smaller your standard error becomes. So it's not wrong to call a standard error a standard deviation. It's representing the same exact thing, average distance from the mean. However, the difference is what distribution are you referring to? Are you re referring to an original distribution's average distance from the mean? We say that's stan standard deviation. Or are you referring a to a sampling distribution's average distance and observation is from the mean? We call that a standard error. We'll have new notation to represent the mean of our new distribution, which we call mu x bar. The mu represents your population mean, x bar is sample mean. So what this is saying is the population mean of your sample means. And so if I was to draw this distribution out, we have a mean and standard deviation. But now we're going to denote these as mu x bar and sigma x bar. Because this isn't a regular distribution anymore. This is the distribution of sample means. Every single dot that is comprised in this distribution, every observation is not a regular observation. It's a mean of a bunch of observations. 
So our spread shrunk by the quantity sigma over the square root of n, and our mean equals our original population mean. Now when we calculate z-scores, if we're interested in the mean of a bunch of observations, we're going to have to adjust our z-score formula. This was our previous z-score formula, when we were finding probabilities and percentages associated with, for instance, for instance, a single observation. Right? We were interested in a single observation. And I'll circle that as kind of just x. How likely is it that a person got an IQ above 120? Now, we're interested in the mean of multiple observations. So the, the concept is exactly the same. A z-score says how many standard deviations away from the mean are you. The only difference is we're referring to a different distribution. This, was, this is dealing with the distribution of sample means. And if we wanted to find our new spread, again, here's the formula for that right there.